Hello. Hello again. We're back. Oh, it seems better the connection this time too. Oh, don't talk too soon. Touch wood. Yeah, don't talk too soon. Yeah. Well, hopefully the share screen works, but we can see anyway how go how we get on. Hello. Hi, Carolina. Hi, Bruno. And now maybe we can hear you. Can you say something? Hello? Hello, how are you? I had my earphones plugged in and I was trying to find why we cannot hear you. So can you hear us now? Yeah, we can hear you. <coughs> Fabulous. Excellent. Great. Oh, so thanks so much for joining today. Okay, so he will be a little bit hidden. <laughs> no, no problem. You can unshare your screen if you want. You don't have to have him on. Okay, I think we can get used to it. Okay. So thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we're absolutely delighted to introduce you to Dr. Lindsay Porter. Um, she is um, a researcher at the University of St. Andrews, Sea Mammal Research Unit in the Asia Pacific office. And she has spent the last 20 years in Asia and runs all the Asia Pacific projects. So Lindsay has been monitoring some of the world's most endangered cetacean species, such as the, the Chinese white river dolphin and the finless porpoise. And she's also leading a collaborative research initiative as part of the newly formed Southeast Asia Marine Mammal Strandings Network. And today she's going to talk to you about tropical cetaceans. So hello, Lindsay. Thanks for joining us. Oh, an absolute, absolute pleasure. Um, I am currently in quarantine in Asia, so I am I am captive in a hotel room somewhere. Uh, normally, I like to be out in the field with quails, dolphins, and porpoise. How's lockdown been for you guys? Are you still shut indoors, or is it a little bit better? A bit better. We can move around and travel within the county. Okay, okay, that's a little bit better than it was before. Um, yeah, quarantine's not great. It's uh, I really feel for you guys because we didn't have the same severity of lockdown in Hong Kong and Taiwan where I work. Um, but being stuck in a hotel room, I'm now on day nine, getting, it's getting a little bit annoying. <laughs> I'm going to try and share my screen with you so I can show you some pictures. So let me know if it, oh, you need to, um, Emer, you need to enable yep. participant screen sharing, sorry. I close the window, there's dogs barking in the background. It's working. Um, go ahead. Is it working? You can see. Okay, so I'm now going to go into. Where are we? Okay. Okay, can you still see me and can you hear me okay? Yes, everything in front right. of Okay. Um, so, Emer's already done a fantastic job about introducing me, and today I want to focus on something uh, about tro tropical marine mammals and also the different signs that they make. Um, and I want, and over the course of our little chat, I'll be talking about how whales can sing, dolphins can whistle, and fish can fart. Now, you must be very careful how you say this word. It sounds like fart, but it's actually F R T. And Emer told me I was allowed to say that on this broadcast, so it's her fault if I'm being too rude. So first of all, what is a marine mammal? Well, there are three major groups of marine mammals. There's the cetaceans, which are the whales, the dolphins, and the porpoise. And then there's the pinnipeds, which are the seals, the walrus, the sea lions. And then in Asia, we have something that nobody else has, which is a dugong. In parts of Africa and parts of the US, they have something similar called a manatee. But in Asia, we have a dugong. And dugongs are pretty cool. They're the only vegetarian marine mammals that there are. So I look at lots of different species and lots of different types of habitat in Asia. This is a river dolphin in India. And you can, I don't know if you can tell, but he doesn't have an eye. They don't need eyes anymore because the river is so murky, is so turbid, that they rely exclusively on sound so that they can navigate and can forage for food and they don't need their eyes anymore. This is also another type of river dolphin called an Irrawaddy river dolphin. And uh, they are one of the more critically endangered populations that I look at. Look at. 
This is the Mekong River in Cambodia, and there's only 80 dolphins left in that whole population. This is another type of Irrawaddy dolphin in Malaysia, which is one of my favourite countries to work in, because a lot of the species in Malaysia are still doing really, really well, mainly because there's hardly any humans in the part of Malaysia that I work in. And I also study big whales. This is a blue whale in Sri Lanka. And one of the big problems that whales have in Sri Lanka is they occur very close to the shipping lanes. And sometimes the ships strike the whales and that causes a lot of mortality, a lot of deaths in that blue whale population. So what I thought we would do first of all is try and we'll, we'll go through some different ways that we can recognize marine mammals. And I'll give you some clues, some pointers, and then it's up to you, Bruno, to try and guess which marine mammals there might be. So pay attention to some of the clues that I'm giving you. So when you're at sea, things that you can look for are splashes in the water or breaking waves as animals surface, as whales, dolphins and porpoise surface. Because remember, they're mammals, which means they have to come to the surface to breathe. This also means that you can see something called a blow. Sometimes when big whales um, exhale and inhale, when they come to the surface, you can hear and see these big <laughs> blows coming from the top of their head, where, if you like, where their nose, where their nostril is. Sometimes you'll also see birds circling where marine mammals might be, or something called prints, which is kind of like a flat of water where a marine mammal might have just swam past. It can leave this little impression called a footprint. But basically, anything unusual is worth going to investigate. But when the weather's really bad, sometimes it's difficult to see these different cues, to see these different signs of what marine mammals there are there. So when you look at a marine mammal, there's all sorts of different things that you can look at. How big is it? How big is the blow? Does it have a fin? What color is it? Does it have a big head? Does it have a small head? Does it have a tail? Do they bring the tail out of the water? All these different things are, can be different between species. There are more than 68 species of whales, dolphins and porpoise, so sometimes it's a bit tricky trying to figure out which one it is, particularly if you only get a quick glance at them as they surface in front of you or a little bit further away from you. But what I'm going to do is give you some tips so that you can recognize some species quite easily. So when we talk about the rostrum or the, the beak of a dolphin, we mean this part here, its nose, it's uh, at the front of its head. And you can either have animals that have a flat head or that have a beak. And these are quite easy for us to see at sea when they bring their heads out the water, but it also helps us quickly to decide which category of species the marine mammal might be. So Irrawaddy dolphins, I'm rather fond of Irrawaddy dolphins. Their beak is flat. They have a flat face and they have this cute smile. They're sort of brown in color, which is the same color as the water that they swim in. And they do have these little round fins on their back. They're pretty small. They only are about one and a half to two meters long. And they're pretty light. They only weigh about 30 to 40 kilograms. So we would call these small delphinids. I'm sure you must know what this one is. This is orca. They are distributed throughout the world. There's a population that um, occurs between Ireland and the west coast of Scotland, I believe a resident population. Um, tropical killer whales, or orca, which are the ones I study, are a little bit smaller than the ones that you would find in Scotland and Ireland. Um, but nonetheless, they have that same striking black and white coloration pattern and this huge dorsal fin that no other species has. So they're very, very unique. Melon-headed whales, I think, are possibly the most chilled out whales in the world. They're not actually whales, they are dolphins, but we call them melon-headed whales. They, they occur mainly in tropical waters. Again, they're pretty small, but they're really quite chunky. They're very heavy dolphins. So although they're only two meters long, they weigh about 160 kilos. Now, when you come across melon-headed whales, one of their characteristics is that they'll hang around in large groups on the surface and they will just not do anything. They'll hang out there just floating, occasionally giving a little blow, 
but you can get pretty close to them. I mean, within one or two meters before they even decide that they might want to move away, which is why I call them the most chilled out um, marine mammal species that I work with. And one of the cool things about melon-headed whales is they have what's called a facial hood. I don't know if you can see, they have this darker patch across the front of their head. And they, like the Irrawaddy dolphins, also have a flat, a flat face. Oh, Fraser's dolphin. I love Fraser's dolphins. Fraser dolphins are, um, they look pretty small, but they're actually pretty heavy. They're very round, very robust animals. And they make this amazing chuffing noise whenever they surface. They go, Toof! and even at night when you're on a boat and you hear that sound, you think, oh, okay, those are Fraser dolphins. And they occur in really quite large groups. And they quite often, if uh, so killer whales or orca hunt tropical dolphins too. And Fraser's dolphins will hide in the middle of a group of melon-headed whales when there are orca around. So it's really cool to see two different species sort of helping to protect each other when there's a predator around. And one of the things that I particularly like about Fraser's dolphins is they've got black lips. It looks as if they actually have lipstick on. So if you get a picture, even if it's just of the head, and you notice that there's black lips, we know immediately it's a Fraser's dolphin without seeing anything else. And they've got little tiny beaks, not very big beaks at all. Okay, rough tooth dolphins. Rough tooth dolphins are the fussiest eaters that I have ever come across. And I have a son and he was a little bit fussy when he was younger and would only eat particular foods. Rough tooth dolphins like to catch their fish and then what they do they're amazingly agile with their tongue and their teeth they rip out the stomach and all of the intestines and they only eat the fillet of the fish it is quite amazing to see they choose the best bit of the fish they rip out all the rest and throw it away and just eat those tasty those tasty bits and I'm really glad I knew that because in Hong Kong, we had a rough toothed dolphin who turned up who really wasn't very well. And we took him into a rehabilitation center to see if we could um, get him fit again to put back out into the wild. And the vets who were looking after them got in touch with me after about two weeks and they said, Lindsay, he's just not eating. So we're having to force feed him, you know, put him down his throat and it really wasn't very pleasant. And I said, well, have you tried uh, filleting the fish? Have you tried taking out the stomach and the guts? Because rough toothed dolphins don't eat those parts. And the vets were amazed because they'd never come across this before. So they started filleting the fish and chopping up the flesh for him. And then he began to eat it, no problem at all. How cool is that? Um, bottlenose dolphins. Bottlenose dolphins you find absolutely everywhere in the world. And nearly every television show that's got a dolphin on or any aquarium that still has dolphins and under human care will have a bottlenose dolphin. They are remarkably flexible and an, an adaptable species. You find them in the tropics, these small little animals in the tropics, and then these much larger, chunkier animals um, in colder waters. The very, very first dolphin I studied was in Scotland and it was the Murray Firth bottlenose dolphins. And the dolphins there are massive. You also get a lot of bottlenose dolphins around the coasts of Ireland. Spotted dolphins are um, the most common dolphin in the world. That means that we think that the, when it comes to number of individuals, spotted dolphins have the largest population globally, but they are restricted to living in just tropical seas. But when you do see them, they occur in groups of like hundreds and thousands of individuals. They're really, really remarkable to see. Now, why do you think they're called spotted? Oops, why do you think they're called spotted dolphins? It's because they've got spots. Scientists sometimes aren't very original. They just see what it is, what's in front of them. But the thing is, the spots don't often develop until the animals are a little bit older. So baby spotted, no do spotted dolphins look a little bit like bottlenose dolphins because they're a uniform gray color. Again, striped dolphins live in tropical water and like spotted dolphins, their name is because of their coloration pattern. I don't know if you can see, this guy here has a stripe that goes from his mouth all the way down the side of his body here. So that's why we call this species 
a striped dolphin. Sperm whales. Sperm whales are awesome. You get lots of sperm whales round about Ireland and you also get them in tropical oceans worldwide. Sperm whales um, live almost exclusively in deep waters and they are, correct me if I'm wrong, Emer, the longest diving marine mammal species that we know of. They can dive for up to 50 minutes, I believe. Yeah, up to an hour. I think cougars beach whales can dive for to a deeper depth though, can't they? That, I think that's what it is. This one can dive for longer, but beaked whales can dive deeper. Yeah. So these, these can be quite challenging species to study because they're hardly ever on the surface. But when they do surface, one of the distinguishing features about a sperm whale is that its blow doesn't come straight out the top of its head. It comes out to the side and no other blow goes sideways like a sperm whale blow does. Now these are massive, massive animals, but even so at sea, if they're far away, you can tell who, what species it is just from the blow coming out the top of their head. Okay, blue whales. Now blue whales I particularly like studying and just so that you know that not everything I do is um, particularly exciting and sexy. Although this is a great species, and they occur in some numbers in Sri Lanka where I work with them. And they are the largest marine mammal there are. They are just simply massive. When you look at the size of the blue whale next to the size of the human, I think you can appreciate just how tiny we are and how big a blue whale is. So this is a blue whale that I was following off of Sri Lanka. Um, and in Sri Lanka, they're a little bit unusual because they feed in tropical waters. But this gives me a really good opportunity to study them. So guess what's in that bucket? What's in that bucket? Um, stew. God stew. It's, it's blue whale poo. Ooh. And what happens in Sri Lanka is when the whales stop feeding, they have their poo is massive and it's all over the surface of the water. So we scoop it up in a big bucket and we take it to the lab and we analyze the DNA in that poo so that we understand what species of prey it is that the blue whale is eating. And we can also sometimes, if it's fresh enough, extract hormones so we can figure out whether it might be a pregnant female or whether it might just be a male. So even though collecting whale poo wasn't something I thought I'd be doing with my career, it gives us a great opportunity to understand a little bit more about these elusive species that we only see for a little bit on the surface. Okay, so it's quiz time, Bruno. Um, I hope I didn't go too fast. I will give you some clues as well as showing you the picture. This species of dolphin you find everywhere in the world and is the most common dolphin that you might see on television. Can you remember what it's called? It's called, that's okay, this is the first one. Um, it is called a bottle nose dolphin. Okay. Now this one here, do you know what this one is? This is Orca. Orca. Well done. And um, what about this one here? What you particularly have to look at is where its blowhole is. Sperm whale. Perfect. Now this is a really, really bad photograph, but I still think you can see quite clearly the coloration patch, the white patch behind the very tall fin. What animal's black and white with a big fin? No, orca? <laughs> it's orca again, yes. That is a terrible picture, so well done. And what about this one? Again, look at the blow. Sperm whale again. It's a sperm whale again. And even though that is a massive animal, it just brings a tiny little part of its body out of the water, which is why knowing about its skew with blow really helps us identify which species it is. Okay, 
What about this one? Same colour as the water it lives in and it has a little tiny dorsal fin. Even I don't know. <laughs> oh, no, I it's, don't know. It's an Irrawaddy dolphin. Oh, that's really And nice. it's okay. You're, these live only in Asia. Okay, this one here. This one with all the spots on. What do you think it is? What a dolphin. <laughs> yes. And this one here. Striped Look at its color. A striped dolphin, yes. See, it's not rocket science. <laughs> Um, okay, so I promised that I would share with you um, the different sounds that marine mammals and some fish make. So there are all marine mammal species use sound, use vocalizations to understand their underwater environment a little bit better. And particularly whales like to sing. So I'm hoping you can hear the audio, the audio on this. So this is whale song. Did you hear that? No. No. No! I could Technology. <laughs> it was very um, so maybe if you turn the volume right off. Try that one. Okay, my volume is up. Okay. I don't know how to do it anymore. Okay. Oh, this is annoying. Okay, let me see. Oh, no, no, no. Like, I heard it. I think that it was just... Well, what, um, I, I might try and play with the settings in a minute. Um, what we also do, um, if we can't hear a sound or when we do have a sound, is we visualize it using this spectrograph. So these lines, and it's a pity you can't hear it because you can see how the lines change and move exactly where the sounds change and move. Maybe, do you want me to try and fiddle with the settings now or? Um, if you have another sound, maybe try another sound. Let's try the next one. Okay, so this is dolphins whistling. Okay, I have this up at the highest volume I can put it on my own computer. No, it's, it's quite hard to hear. No, nothing. There must be a way to do this. Sound in here. No, thank you. Did you hear it then? Yeah. <laughs> Share sound. Okay, let me go back one. Okay, so these are, first of all, these are singing whales. And then we have whistling dog. This, in fact, is orca. Uh, orcas are not whales. They also belong to the dolphin family. And they make a fantastic different array of, of different sounds. And I also promised I'd tell you a little bit about fish. Oh, no, I don't want to do that. There we go. So it was actually a very good friend of mine was studying um, killer, uh, orca in Canada when he was hearing all this other sounds. And he wondered what it was because to him, it sounded a bit like farting. And what it turned out to be was the herring that the orca were feeding on they make this sound. And it's actually how they control uh, some of the muscles in their body. And they click those muscles together to make this fast, repetitive tick, 
which my friend Ben, which my friend Ben, there he is there, just wrote a paper on this and he decided because he sound, that sounded a little bit like farting, he would call them F-R-T. So that's why we say some species of fish fart. Scientists do have a sense of humor sometimes, I promise you. Um, so we do spend a lot of time listening to different marine mammals um, underwater. And one way that we do that, or what, the reason that we do that is because it's really expensive to get out on boats the whole time. So sometimes if we can use devices or tools that we put into the marine environment, they can collect the data for us. Um, so we monitor for all different types of sounds. Uh, this is what a dugong sounds like. I think they sound a little bit sounds like a small like a puppy. dog. Yep, it yep, sounds yep. like a puppy, doesn't it? Yeah. Well, that's what dugong yep. sound like. Um, and then we have um, these are spider dolphins. And they just make lots and lots of different whistles, clicks, squawks, grunts, chirp. They're incredibly vocal. I particularly like sperm whales. They've got a pretty cool vocalization. Isn't that cool? I think that sounds like um, maybe drumsticks um, being hit together or, or clapping hands. And then oh, the kind of wooden thing that you turn yes. around. Oh yeah, I have one of those and I have drumsticks. Yeah. Oh, do you? So you can make a noise like a sperm wheel. Cool. Um, okay. Um, Emer, I never asked you how long I was allowed to talk. I'm 30 minutes. Oh gosh, so, am I nearly no, finished yet? I've been talking for ages. Ah, uh, no, you're fine. I think we still have another, it goes over an extra 10 minutes, so don't worry. I'll get okay, it. You can just, further, you can tell me to stop when you've had enough. Um, okay, we've heard, we've heard orca already. Uh, we heard humpbacks already. And um, let's listen. Now this, in Hong Kong, I studied Chinese white dolphins and they eat this fish species here. And this fish is called a croaker because it makes this sound. <laughs> And that's forming their swim bladders. Um, so I know sometimes when I might hear dolphins, because I'll hear lots of croakers croaking, and I think, oh, the dolphins will be here soon to eat the croakers. Now, I think I might be running, uh, I'll flick through a few slides. I wanted to share with you one of my favorite programs because it's in a really, really remote part of the world where we can't go to very often. And because I can't go there very often, we use something called a sound trap, which is like a little mini hydrophone, a little microphone that you can put underwater. It's got a huge hard drive. They're really tiny, they last for a long time, and they're really easy to deploy. So where are you? You're over here in Europe. I'm currently here in Taiwan, but my project site is here in Borneo. Borneo is really amazing. There's hardly any people live on this east coast. So the marine mammals that you find there haven't really been disturbed very much by humans. So on a particular coral um, atoll reef here at, called Sea Amal, I'm allowed to put down these hydrophones. There is one problem with this particular part of Asia and that it's got quite a lot of pirates. So when I do go there, I have to get special permission from the government and they send the Navy with me to deploy, to deploy the hydrophones. But what that means is that there's no fishing and there's no other humans there. So the marine mammals, which pirates don't care about, are left very much on their own to get on with their lives. So we put this down um, earlier this year before travel restrictions started. Um, basically, it was a tub of concrete and we popped the sound trap on there and we left the sound trap to record continuously for 33 days. And it was amazing on 27 of those days, 
we heard marine mammals round about that area. So that means marine mammals must have been within a kilometre of the area for us to pick them up on the sound trap. We haven't gone through all of the data yet, but so far we've identified at least spinner dolphins, spotted dolphins and orca. So that's really, really cool because what I'm interested in, particularly in that area, is tropical orca because we know nothing about tropical orca in that area of Asia. And the other thing that we're doing in that area is there are a, a few fishermen and there are quite a lot of divers or some really good dive sites. So we've set up a social media program where people send me their um, clips and videos so that we can figure out what, which particular marine mammals they are seeing. So this is a pygmy killer whale and you only find them in tropical waters. They're, they're pretty cool. They're kind of like the cousins of orca. Um, and these are some of the videos that I get sent. Now, this is where you need to put your identification skills to their, their most heightened ability, because some of the videos we get, as you'll see, are really, you look at them and you think, there's no way I can tell what it is. And then you can slow it down and extract some images, and then you can figure out what it is. So let me see if I can show you what I mean. I have muted, oh, I have muted these because some very excited people in the background were not saying very nice, appropriate words. So if the sound comes on, I'll stop immediately, but I think I've muted it. <laughs> Off now. Yeah. Um, so this animal here is the only vegetarian marine mammal. Can you remember what that's called? It's a funny name. It's a dugong. Oh, and the reason I know it's a dugong is just purely by the way it's swimming under the water, sort of moving around in very shallow, shallow water. Not many marine mammals will go into water that shallow. Okay. Again, let me check that I muted the sound. So these were sent from some uh, dive operators who got very excited when they saw some marine mammals but you can't hear them, which is a good thing. So they were zooming along in their boat and they had all, oh, there was a leaping animal, lots of splashes, terrible video making, making me feel a little bit sick looking at it. But I thought, okay, what can I try and do to figure out which species this is? They were also able to <laughs> right on the bow of the boat. very excited diver there and again here we could see that it was a really 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 huge group so those were my clues what species could this be so i tried to grab some stills from the the cell phone camera and again it wasn't great i could see it was a small dolphin i could see there was some coloration um, but it really wasn't a very clear image. But then I looked at the footage of the dolphins when they were on the bow, and I noticed that it had a little tiny, tiny beak, not a round face, just a tiny, tiny beak. And then I was able to capture a still that showed me this very distinctive black lip. So uh -huh. what do we do you remember the word they were called? No. They're called Fraser's Dolphins. They Beautiful. have these very distinctive little black lips. So if we put our detective hats on, even video that's not fantastic and we're not quite sure what it is, um, we can still pick out these little pieces of information that give us clues so we know which species it is. And I've only got one more to show you. Oh, no, this is uh, this one. <laughs> because they were so close to the boat, they were literally taking fish from the fishermen's hands. So these are dolphins that swim in rivers. They're one of my favorites. They've got a flat face and little tiny dorsal fins. These are Irrawaddy dolphins. So that was really easy. I recognized that straight away. 
Um, no, let's not. Let me flick to the last one. Okay, so this was taken on a beautifully calm day. And when I saw the videos, I was very excited because these are quite rare. So let me know when you recognize what species it is. It's an orca. It's an orca. Is it? Yes, I'm Yep. Straight away. Big fin, the little white patch. So I was very excited when I saw this. And then somebody jumped in the water with the orca. Right. What happened? <laughs> Really clean there, isn't it? And then somebody jumped in the water. Oh, no. Oh, come on, flick to the next one. And this was the video. <laughs> What's that? Baby orca learning how to eat fish. A few glimpses, a few seconds. Then he realised what it was and he jumped back in the boat again because he was a little bit worried. But from that video, I know now that we definitely see killer whale um, orca in that particular study site. Okay, I've been talking for ages and ages and I have hardly given you any time to ask me any questions. Do you have any questions? Or anything I do, like to... actually. Did you meet any pirates? Um, pirates. Um, I was working in Indonesia and um, some pirated, they weren't like pirates of the Caribbean, I was very disappointed. Uh, so they came to visit our boat to see if we had anything that they would quite like. Now, I had already been warned about this, so I had with me 200 cigarettes and a couple of bottles of really good Scottish whiskey. And that was what I gave the pirates so that they would leave us alone and so that they would protect us or look after us while we were working in those area, in that area. So I guess it wasn't really pirating, it was kind of like gifts because we were working, working in that area. Nice. And we just... Are you able to recognize the species poorly with the sound or not yet? Yes, uh, quite a lot of species we can do that. Um, it's really tricky separating uh, things like a spinner dolphin and a spotted dolphin. They have very similar vocalizations, but uh, they tend to live in slightly different habitats. But yet yeah, things like orca, really distinctive, bottlenose, very distinctive, and uh, dugongs, of course, with those little puppy sounds, nothing else quite sounds like that. So there are some species that are really clear. Okay, guys, we're running out of time, so um, okay. we've less than a minute left. <laughs> but um, thank you so much, Lindsay. That was absolutely amazing. Really interesting work that you do over in Asia. So really appreciate you joining us today for our Meet Marine Biologist Mondays. I hope you had fun, Bruno. And Bruno, if you have, uh, can Bruno send questions by email if he has any more? Yeah, is that yeah. work away? Yeah. Okay. Very yeah. happy for you to do that. If thank you, you, if you think much. of any more questions. Okay, thank you. It was very nice. Okay, lovely to meet you guys. Thank Bye. you. Bye.